The New Zealand National Rugby League team Maori, Tima Riki Motu Aotearoa, has represented New Zealand in rugby league since 1907. Administered by the New Zealand Rugby League, they are commonly known as the Kiwis, after the native bird of that name. The team's colours are majority black with white and the players perform a haka before every match they play as a challenge to their opponents. The New Zealand Kiwis are currently second in the RLIF World Rankings. Since the 1980s, most New Zealand representatives have been based overseas, in the professional National Rugby League and Super League competitions. Before that players were selected entirely from clubs in domestic New Zealand leagues. A New Zealand side first played in a 1907 professional rugby tour which pre-dated the birth of rugby league football in the Southern Hemisphere, making it the second oldest national side after England. Since then the Kiwis have regularly competed in international competition, touring Europe and Australia throughout the 20th century. New Zealand have competed in every Rugby League World Cup since the first in 1954, reaching three consecutive tournament finals between 2000-2013. In 2008, New Zealand won the World Cup for the first time. They also contest the Baskerville Shield against England. History Rugby football was introduced into New Zealand by Charles John Monroe, son of the then Speaker of the New Zealand House of Representatives, Sir David Monroe. He had been sent to Christ's College, East Finchley in North London, where he became an enthusiastic convert to the new code. He brought the game back to his native Nelson, and arranged the first rugby match between Nelson College and Nelson Football Club, played on 14 May 1870. When New Zealand's national rugby team the All Blacks toured Britain in 1905 they witnessed the growing popularity of the breakaway non-amateur Northern Union's games. On his return in 1906, all-black George William Smith met the Australian entrepreneur J. J. Giltonen to discuss the potential of professional rugby in Australasia. The first New Zealand team to play professional rugby was known as the All Blacks. To avoid confusion, the terms professional All Blacks or All Golds are used. The professional All Blacks In the meantime, a lesser-known New Zealand rugby player, Albert Henry Baskerville, or Baskerville was ready to recruit a group of players for a Great Britain Pro Tour. It is believed that Baskerville became aware of the profits to be made from such a venture while he was working at the Wellington Post Office in 1906. A colleague had a coughing fit and dropped a British newspaper. Baskerville picked it up and noticed a report about a Northern Union new match that over 40,000 people had attended. Baskerville wrote to the NRFU asking if they would host a New Zealand touring party. The 1905 All Blacks tour was still fresh in English minds, thus the new saw the upcoming competitive New Zealand tour as exceptional opportunity to raise the profile and finances of the new game. The new agreed to the tour provided that some of those original All Blacks were included in the New Zealand team. George Smith arrived back in New Zealand and after learning of Baskerville's plans, the two teamed up and began signing players. The New Zealand Rugby Union became aware of the tour and promptly applied pressure to any all-black or New Zealand representative player it suspected of involvement. They had the New Zealand government's agent general in London deliver a statement to the British press in an effort to undermine the tour's credibility. This had little effect and by that time the professional all-blacks were already sailing across the Tasman to give Australia its first taste of professional rugby. The All Golds It was during this time that references to the professional All Blacks as the All Golds first appeared. Clearly, All Golds was a play on the amateur, All Blacks name but it was also an insult to the players, criticizing the arrangement where they would each share in the wealth of the tour. The name, All Golds is now thought to have originated in a New Zealand newspaper in May, June 1907 see panel below, amidst editorial arguments over whether it was honourable for the proposed professional All Blacks team to be paid. The first documented use in Australia was in a headline in the Sydney Morning Herald the 7th of August, just before Baskerville's team arrived. Those same Herald articles also had a tag for those who supported the amateur rugby union calling them the Lily Whites. 
who were clean, pure, and repelled the evils of professionalism. The All Golds name is now carried by the Gloucestershire All Golds a semi-professional team who are based in Gloucestershire and compete in the RFL League One, formerly Championship One and currently known as Kingstone Press League One for sponsorship reasons, is a professional rugby league competition based in England. They also take part in the annual Challenge Cup and League One Cup. The club bears the name in honour of the third test match played at the club's home ground in Cheltenham. Topic: The first tour. Professional rugby in the Southern Hemisphere kicked off with the professional All Blacks playing a professional Rebel New South Wales team organised by Smith's contact James Giltonen. The games drew little interest to start with, but were a major success for the Rugby Rebels of Australia, as they finally had the money to start the first professional rugby football league and hence change the face of rugby in Australia. New Zealand made it to Great Britain in 1907. They included Australian Daly Messenger in their party. He missed the first test defeat, but played in the two tests which the All Golds won. At this time professional rugby, under the banner of the Northern Union, was not played by the RFU rules which was all the All Golds knew. The All Golds took on a week of intensive training after which they started the tour. From a New Zealander's point of view, the tour may not have been successful, but to the All Gold's credit they performed well considering they only had a week to learn the rules. However, from the News' point of view the tour would have been a godsend, because professional rugby was left in a better state than when they arrived. The tour's results were seen the following year when the NRFU clubs more than doubled their membership numbers. The tour had obviously excited the public, raised the profile of their game as well as the game's finances. During their return voyage from England, the All Golds made a stop over in Australia where they discovered that professional rugby was being played with Northern Union rules, under the banner of the New South Wales Rugby Football League The All Golds played another ten games in Australia, boosting the finances of the fledging NSWRFL Premiership, making the All Golds Tour one of the most significant contributions to the sport of rugby league in Australia. The All Golds were Hercules Richard. Bumper. Wright Captain, George William Smith Vice Captain, Albert Baskerville Secretary, Herbert Turtle, Harold Rowe, Duncan McGregor, Daly Messenger, Edgar Wrigley, Joseph Lavery, Richard Winyard, William Winyard, Lance Todd, Edward Tyne, William Tyler, Arthur Kelly, Tom. Angry. Cross, William Massa Johnston, Eric Watkins, Conrad Byrne, Adam Lyle, Daniel Gilchrist, Arthur Callum, Charles Pierce, William Trevarthan, Charles Dunning, William Mackerel, Daniel Fraser, Assistant Manager, Jim Gleason, Treasurer, and H. J. Palmer, Financial Manager. Topic: The Kiwis. The 1910 Great Britain Lions Tour of Australia and New Zealand saw the Kiwis' first ever test on home soil, with the British side proving too strong. In 1911 the New Zealand national team toured Australia. 1920 represented a high point for New Zealand Rugby League and sport in that country with two matches against the touring British Lions Rugby League team drawing 40,000 fans each in Auckland's domain. The NZRU was able to control a lot of what the New Zealand Rugby League NZRL was able to get its hands on. In 1926, the union took legal action, trying to stop the league from using the name, the All Blacks, as their touring name. The NZRL felt that they had equal ownership to the name and were not ready to relinquish it. However, by this time the press had already nicknamed the team, the Kiwis, because of the badge included on their jerseys. Despite the league trying to discourage its usage, the name has stuck ever since. The 1926-27 New Zealand Tour of Britain involved several skirmishes within the Kiwi Party. Problems began on the boat journey over, with disputes developing about aspects of the trip and a rift developed between tour manager and coach, Mr Mayor, an Australian and seven forwards. The disputes continued once the party arrived in Britain, with one of the rebels being involved in a street fight with another member of the tour party after the opening match. In mid-November, following further disturbances, which almost led to the tour party being evicted from their Harrogate Hotel, it was decided that Coach Mayer would withdraw from team selection and match tactics for a period of four weeks. The tour, and the costly disputes, continued, with the rebels eventually setting sail for home a week earlier than their colleagues. 
Three months later all seven players were banned for life by the New Zealand authorities. New Zealand did not visit Europe again until 1939. In 1938, for a tour of Australia, the New Zealand Rugby League officially adopted the name the New Zealand Kiwis. This side was also the first to wear a white V on their jerseys. Post-war In 1947 at Odsal Stadium, Bradford in England, a crowd of 42,680 saw New Zealand play, setting a new record for the team on British soil. The Kiwis were unbeaten in any test series from 1948 to 1951 and won six of their nine tests. They toured England and France in 1951-52. New Zealand were hosted by France for the first ever World Cup match in 1954's inaugural tournament. They lost that match as well as the remaining two to finish last. In the 1957 World Cup New Zealand got their first World Cup win, with victory against France in one of their three matches. The Kiwis got exactly the same result in the 1960 World Cup too. During the 1961-63 era, New Zealand won seven out of ten test matches, including a 2-0 series win over Great Britain, then considered the top rugby league nation in the world. The most outstanding performance by the New Zealanders was their record-breaking 19-0 win over Britain in 1962. It was only the second time a British team had been held scoreless. New Zealand in the period 1960-65 won the Courtney Goodwill Trophy for most successful test-playing nation. The Kiwis again got a sole win against France from their three matches of the 1970 World Cup. In 1971, the Kiwis embarked on a 34-match tour of England and France. While they only won half of the matches they played against English club teams, they won the Test Series 2-1, winning the first Test 18-13, the second 17-14 but losing the third 3-12. They won the series against France 2-0, winning the first Test 27-11, the second 24-2 but drawing the third 3-3. In the 1972 World Cup New Zealand failed to win a game. In the season-long 1975 World Series, New Zealand won two out of their eight games, finishing second last. The 1977 World Cup brought the Kiwis the familiar result of a sole win against France. A World Cup-rated test took place on Sunday 7 July 1985 at Carlo Park. Australia's 18-0 defeat was the first time they had failed to score in a test against New Zealand. On Tuesday 7 July 1987, New Zealand team warmed up for internationals against Papua New Guinea and Australia by taking on the Queensland state team at Lang Park, Brisbane. They then went on to record a 22-16 victory. Australia crashed to a defeat on Tuesday 21 July 1987, when the kangaroo dominance of the international game suffered a rare setback. New Zealand were their opponents in a match which had been arranged to fill the gap created by the non-appearance of France. New Zealand won the game 13-6. The next four internationals between Australia and New Zealand were all staged in New Zealand, and all were won by the Kangaroos. In the final test match of the 1988 Great Britain Lions Tour, New Zealand just pipped the British 12-10 in a freezing encounter in Christchurch for a place in the final against Australia. Played at Eden Park in Auckland, it was the most hyped game in the history of rugby league in New Zealand, and the crowd of 47,363 was the biggest ever for a game in Auckland. Sadly for the Kiwis, the final proved to be a huge anti-climax and they were outplayed by the Aussies. On 20 June 1993 the first all-professional, and all-overseas based, Kiwis side took the field against Australia. New Zealand almost got their revenge on Australia in the 1995 World Cup semi-final when, with the scores level at 20-20, a last-minute drop goal attempt by skipper Matthew Ridge brushed the wrong side of the post, allowing the game to go into extra time. From there, Australia went on to win. Due to the NZRL's alignment with Super League, a New Zealand team selected only from Australasian-based players competed in 1997's Super League Tri-Series against Queensland and New South Wales. In 1998 the Kiwis travelled to the UK for a three-test series against Great Britain, winning the first and second tests and drawing the third. <laughs> New millennium 
The Kiwis handed England their biggest ever loss to again make the final in the 2000 World Cup, but again went down to the Kangaroos 40–12. Gary Freeman coached New Zealand from 2001–02. Beginning in 2002, a New Zealand A team was selected from players in the domestic New Zealand competition. New Zealand A toured France and the United States in 2002, and the United Kingdom in 2003. In 2004 they hosted New South Wales country. In 2003 the Kiwis played their 100th international against Australia. Brian McLennan was appointed national coach of New Zealand in June 2005. His appointment was controversial, mainly because he had no professional coaching experience. 2005 would be considered one of the Kiwis' greatest years, as they captured the 2005 Tri Nations title, effectively becoming de facto world champions as the three best countries competed in that competition. In the course of winning the Tri Nations, the Kiwis defeated Australia in Sydney for the first time in half a century. In London, the Kiwis posted their highest score ever against Great Britain and, in winning the final, posted the first shutout of Australia in 20 years. The 24-0 result at Ellen Road, Leeds equaled the Kiwis' biggest ever win against Australia, a 49-25 win in Brisbane almost 50 years previously. It was Australia's first defeat in a series or tournament since 1978. In New Zealand, Brian McLennan earned praise from the press and signed an extension to his coaching tenure with the Kiwis. In 2006 the Kiwis lost both mid-season tests to the Kangaroos and Lions. The 2006 Tri-Nations brought controversy when New Zealand fielded an ineligible player, Nathan Fian, against Great Britain and were later stripped of the two points earned from their 18-14 win. In July 2007, the Leeds Rhinos announced that Brian McLennan would be joining the club as head coach on a two-year contract from 1 December 2007. McLennan subsequently resigned as national coach and his position was taken up by Gary Kemble in August 2007. All Golds Revival Under Gary Kemble the Kiwis went on to lose the first of their three test series against Great Britain going down 14-20 against the Lions at Huddersfield on 27 October 2007. Following the loss an Australian newspaper reported that former Kiwi captain Hugh McGahan was concerned at Kemble's poor start and suggested that former Australian and current Brisbane Broncos coach Wayne Bennett should be pursued for the role. McGahan later claimed that his comments had been grossly misreported by the journalist. In the second test of the series on 3 November 2007, Kemble returned to KC Stadium, the ground on which he had spent a large portion of his playing days with Hull FC. It was to be a disastrous homecoming, however, as the Kiwis suffered their second humiliating defeat under Kemble when beaten 44-0 by an inspired Great Britain. The win gave Great Britain an unassailable series lead leaving the Kiwis with only pride to play for in the final test at JJB Stadium in Wigan. Intense criticism followed the second test loss, some of it directed at the players, some of it toward the management of the NZRL. However, Kemble also copped severe criticism from some quarters with one commentator suggesting that Kemble must be sacked at the series end and describing him as a captain of calamity. Following the loss, Kiwis captain Roy Asotasi hinted at the possibility of internal issues for the players in adjusting to Kemble's coaching style when he compared Kemble's approach with that of his predecessor McLennan describing them as very different and reporting that the group was still trying to gel. Following the loss Kemble acknowledged that he was contemplating resigning from his post if the Kiwis were whitewashed 3-0 by Great Britain. Despite a far more spirited performance in the third test the Kiwis were unable to prevent the whitewash losing 22-28 after leading 12-0 early in the match. Kemble was forthright in expressing his desire to remain Kiwi coach following the loss with the general feeling being that the loss was close enough for him to retain the position. Kemble was the subject of some ridicule for post-match comments which suggested that the Kiwis almost won the Test Series. Despite an aggregate score of 92-36 across the three tests, in December 2007 the NZRL held its annual awards dinner. Being 100 years since the inception of Rugby League in New Zealand, a 13-man New Zealand team of the century was named on the evening, with Cliff Johnson named at captain. Mark Graham was named in the second row and was also honoured as the greatest Kiwi player of the century. 
Kemble resigned as head coach after Captain Roy Asotasi and David Kidwell both publicly said that they had no confidence in his coaching abilities. Subsequently, former Kiwi, Stephen Carney was appointed coach with Wayne Bennett given a role as an advisor. The All Golds were revived again in 2008 as a testimonial match for Reuben Wiki, where they defeated the New Zealand Maori team 44-10 at Yarrow Stadium in New Plymouth. Kearney's Kiwis Stephen Kearney's first match as New Zealand coach was against Australia in the 2008 centenary test. The match celebrated 100 years since the first Trans-Tasman clash began. Later on in that year, the 2008 World Cup kicked off. Wayne Bennett assisted Kearney in the competition. Kearney's Kiwis advanced from the group stage in second position which saw them face England for a second time in the tournament, this time in the semi-final. In the group stage, the Kiwis were at one point trailing 24-8 before scoring 26 consecutive points and keep the Palms scoreless in the second half to go on to win 36-24. The Kiwis didn't have to recover a deficit in the semi-final as they went on to another World Cup final meeting with Australia. In a seesaw-like battle, the Kiwis created history after full-time when they won the final 34-20. This was New Zealand's first ever World Cup title, as well as the Australian team's first loss since Great Britain defeated them in November 2006 and their first loss to New Zealand since November 2005. It was also their first loss in a World Cup match since 1995 and in a final since 1972. At the end of the 2010 domestic season, New Zealand played in the 2010 Four Nations. During the round robin fixtures, New Zealand produced their biggest win on home soil with a 64 point win over Papua New Guinea. The Kiwis qualified for the final where they played Australia at the same venue as the 2008 World Cup final. The Kiwis won at Lang Park once again after a try in the final seconds of the game sealed the low-scoring game, and 2010 Four Nations title, for the Kiwis, winning 16-12. In 2013 New Zealand headed into the World Cup as defending champions for the first time. The Kiwis advanced out of their group with ease despite suffering a scare against Samoa in their opening game. Kearney's men then advanced to the semi-finals, courtesy of a win over Scotland, where they then met hosts England at Wembley. It was a seesaw affair which saw the Kiwis trailing 18-14 with one minute on the clock remaining until star playmaker Sean Johnson produced a magical moment to level the scores and then convert his try after the siren to win the match and make the Kiwis advance to a third consecutive World Cup final. This was the first time they had beaten England or Great Britain in England since 2005. The win also made the Kiwis equal their best winning streak record of five games. In the final, watched by a record international attendance of 74,468, they were outclassed at the Theater of Dreams as Australia earned revenge for their 2008 final defeat. After the World Cup Kearney was put under pressure after it was found out players were mixing sleeping pills and energy drinks during the tournament which affected performances. He had to reapply for his job and was only given a two-year contract, unlike the usual one that would end after the next World Cup, which the NZRL said was because he needed to re-establish the culture at the Kiwis which was damaged so badly at the World Cup. Carney immediately took action, naming six debutantes for the first test match of 2014. At the end of the 2014 club season New Zealand played in the 2014 Four Nations. In the first game they continued their good record against Australia at the Cauldron with another win setting the record at three wins in the past four meetings against the Kangaroos at the venue. In the second game the Kiwis faced another scare against Samoa when they were on the verge of a 12-10 defeat with just minutes remaining before Kearney's men scored near full time to avoid the shock result. After defeating England in their final game they qualified for the final held in Wellington where they'd face Australia again. New Zealand won the match 22-18 and therefore the Four Nations, their second tournament title. This was their first win over Australia on home soil since 2003 where they beat the Aussies at North Harbour Stadium. In the final, winger Manu Vachuvii scored two tries to become New Zealand's top try scorer after tallying his 20th try during the match to beat a record that's been held by Nigel Vagana since 2006. This was the first time New Zealand went through an entire tournament unbeaten. In March 2015, Kearney's successful management saw the NZRL announce an extension to his contract until the end of the 2017 World Cup. 
The 2015 Anzac Test was held in Suncorp Stadium. The Kiwis continued their great record in Brisbane with a commanding 26-12 victory giving them their first Anzac Test win since 1998. It was also the first time since 1953 that New Zealand beat Australia in three consecutive Test matches. This win also meant New Zealand equaled their best winning streak record once again just like they did after the 2013 World Cup semi-final. On 15 May 2015, the new RLIF World Rankings were announced and it read that, for just the second time, New Zealand were officially the best team in the world. New Zealand were last ranked world number one back in 2008 after their World Cup success. At the end of the year New Zealand were unable to beat their winning record after losing the Baskerville series to England. At the conclusion of that series, it was revealed that Carney had the best record out of any New Zealand coach to date as he was involved in the most matches 41, won the most matches 23, and won the most matches against Australia 5. He also revealed that despite the defeat to England he wanted the Kiwis to dominate the next decade of International Rugby League. Before the 2016 Anzac Test, controversy had occurred when regular New Zealand players Manu Vachuviai and Ben Matalino were caught partying and mixing energy drinks with prescription drugs. Carney toughened his stance and announced he'd not be selecting them for the test match in a decision which saw commends from fellow New Zealand internationals. These players were just two of ten regular name players missing from the New Zealand side for the fixture, with others missing through injury or private issues. New Zealand lost the match 16-0 and in the process ended their winning streak against Australia. This was also the first time New Zealand scored zero points in a test match since 2007. In September 2016, Carney left New Zealand after accepting an offer to coach New Zealand's only NRL team. Kidwell's Kiwis David Kidwell's first match as New Zealand coach was against Australia in Perth. This was the first time an international rugby league game was held in Western Australia. In the 2016 Four Nations, New Zealand beat England for the first time on English soil since the tournament was introduced in 2009. In New Zealand's last round-robin fixture, they drew with Scotland and, in the process, gave the fourth nation their first ever point in the tournament's history. Despite the shock result, New Zealand still managed to qualify for a rematch with trans-Tasman rivals, Australia, in the final. After losing by just six points in the round-robin stage meeting, the Kiwis were thrashed by the Kangaroos in the final 34-8. After the final Anzac Test fixture was played, Kidwell spoke on behalf of the NZRL to announce that Captain Jesse Bromwich, and Kevin Proctor were suspended from playing in the World Cup after they were caught buying cocaine from a stranger after the Test match. Controversy occurred before the 2017 World Cup, after star forward, Jason Taumalolo, decided to switch allegiances after choosing to play for Tonga at the World Cup rather than his country of birth. David Fusichawa, Siosaiwa Takiaho and Manu Mao, who were all in contention for World Cup selection, also followed Tomalolo's lead. Australian forward Andrew Fafita did likewise, after initially being selected in the Australian team, making Tonga one of the tournament favourites. It was at first believed, Tomalolo switched to play for Tonga in protest for the NZRL's decision to suspend Bromwich and Proctor from playing in the World Cup. However, it was later confirmed he just wanted to play for his family, and grow the game in the Pacific Island nation. Former New Zealand coach, Graham Lowe, and former New Zealand captain, Benji Marshall, hit out at Taumalolo for his decision. New Zealand began the World Cup with convincing victories over both Samoa, and Scotland. In their final pool match, they took on the most talked about team of the tournament, Tonga. After leading 16-2 at half-time, New Zealand created unwanted history, becoming the first Tier 1 nation to lose to a Tier 2 nation in a World Cup match. New Zealand then took on Fiji in the quarterfinal. Kidwell's side went on to create back-to-back -back defeats to Tier 2 nations and therefore be eliminated in the quarterfinals. This was the lowest ever finish the Kiwis created in a World Cup tournament. After the match, critics and media were hitting out at Kidwell and his players with the way they handled the defeat. After the Kiwis' most embarrassing World Cup performance in history, pressure was put on Kidwell to leave. Hakka initiation 
The haka is a very respected tradition to the Kiwis, which is why they turn down offers to do it for sponsorship, promotional purposes. The initiation haka is used as a form of team bonding for the Kiwis, although this haka has a unique twist. All new players and staff are required to perform an initiation haka, even journalists have been forced into it. This usually happens during an open training session. Staff and players gather into a circle, with new players and staff standing inside the circle. They then strip down to their underwear and start performing a haka. As the haka starts, the team members forming the circle start to lower themselves, revealing the performance to media and fans who have shown up. Before the matches, the Kiwis traditionally performed the Ka Mate Haka, but, since the 2013 Rugby League World Cup, they instead perform the Te Iwi Kiwi Haka. The words are translated as follow. Topic. Results New Zealand have been playing international matches since 1907. Topic. Tournament history A red box around the year indicates tournaments played within New Zealand. Topic. World Cup Topic. Tri Nations, Four Nations Topic. Kits The shirt in the years suffered several variations, such as the checkered chevron of 1994, the half black and white shirt with a silver fern in 1995, the chevron forming the inscription, Kiwis, in 1997 and the curved and broad white chevron that runs to the sleeves in the early 2000s or the gold and white double chevron in 2014. Topic. Kit suppliers and sponsors On the back of the shorts, Rivera is on the bottom left and the bottom right. Topic. Players Topic. Current squad The New Zealand national team squad for the 2018 Tour of England. Nelson Asofa Salomona, Corey Harawaira Neira and Zane Tetevano were originally selected but withdrew due to injury. They were replaced by Pita Hiku, Agnatius Pasi and Isaiah Papali'i. Notable past players Captains Category, New Zealand National Rugby League Team Captains Team of the Century 1907-2006 1. Day White 2. Tom Hadfield 3. Tommy Baxter 4. Roger Bailey 5. Philip Orchard 6. George Menzies 7. Stacey Jones 8. Cliff Johnson C. 9. Jock Butterfield 10. Ruben Wiki 11. Mark Graham 12. Ron Acklin 13. Mel Cook Topic. Coaches The current coach of New Zealand is Michael Maguire. Topic. Records Topic. New Zealand A New Zealand are also represented by a second string representative team called New Zealand A. New Zealand A Def. Australian Invitational 1348 18, the 22nd of October 2006. New Zealand A Def. Australian Invitational 1340 16, the 15th of October 2005. Between 2002 and 2003, the New Zealand residents were referred to as New Zealand A. National League One representative Def. New Zealand A40 to 28, the 2nd of November 2003. Great Britain Def. New Zealand A52 to 18, the 29th of October 2003. Warrington Wolves Def. 
New Zealand A28 to 26, the 26th of October 2003. National League 2 representative Def. New Zealand A27 to 6, the 22nd of October 2003. New Zealand A drew Cumbria 24 to 24, the 19th of October 2003. New Zealand A Def. USA 74 to 4, the 6th of October 2002. France Def. New Zealand A, the 29th of September 2002. Topic. See also. Junior Kiwis. New Zealand Rugby League. Rugby League in New Zealand. 2007 All Gold Celebrations. New Zealand Maori Rugby League team New Zealand National Rugby Union team Topic Sources Rugby League from 1966 Encyclopedia of New Zealand